With this being the fifth installment in Illumination's Despicable Me universe, it's safe to say that we've already seen plenty of powerful heroes and baddies from this series. So of course, we just had to figure out how the characters in this latest installment compare. Who's at the very bottom in terms of power and who's on their way to being the number one supervillain? I'm Kifinosi with Wicked Binge and this is Minions Rise of Gru, Weak to Powerful. major spoilers ahead for the second Minions movie. We're also going to occasionally be touching on the first Minions movie, however we aren't going to be including characters that were only in the first Minions movie, since our focus is mostly going to be on the sequel and its characters. In other words, don't expect to find Scarlet Overkill or her husband Herb here. Additionally, we won't just be ranking characters on their physical strengths nor superpowers, we'll also be incorporating their weapons, resources, intelligence, and durability into our ranking. Now with all that out of the way, let's start off with our weakest characters before making our way up to the strong and powerful. At the very bottom of our list, we have someone who plays a very minor role in the film, Marlena Gru, aka Gru's mother. Although we've seen in the other Despicable Me films that she has a bit of skill and strength to her, we don't even get a hint of any of that in this film. In Minions 2, Marlena is essentially your typical suburban mom, not having anything too special nor unique about her. While she isn't at all intimidated by the vicious six when they bust into her home, she doesn't really do anything to fight back against them either. In fact, Nunchuck is able to tie her up with ease truly leaving Marlena powerless to do anything against them. Granted, you could make the excuse that all of this is due to the typical apathy that she has, and if she actually did try, she could maybe get a few hits in and maybe even earn herself a win. But in terms of what we actually see, we just can't see her being ranked anywhere other than at the very bottom of this list. Just above her, we have another Despicable Me legacy character, Dr. Nefario. With this younger Nefario not being nearly as senile as we usually see him, he manages to pull off a couple of impressive feats in the short amount of screen time he has within this film. This is mainly through his smart slime gun, which she gives to a young Gru. This weapon is essentially a living slime hand, stretchy and strong enough to grab anything you need it to, and at a distance to boot, which is certainly handy. I'm sorry. In fact, we see the slime gun help Gru out of jams several times throughout the film. It's really no wonder that Gru decided to eventually hire Nefario as his own personal mad scientist, despite his unconventional ideas. Unfortunately, other than the smart slime and the car we see at the very end, we don't see any more of Nefario's inventions nor do we see Nefario actually try to fight off anyone. So while we can say he's more powerful than Gru's mother, he kind of pales in comparison to the rest of the cast. Finally getting into our minion characters, next up is Stuart. With his laid back and mischievous nature and his role as comic relief often preventing him from doing anything super impressive, it's easy to say that Stuart is probably the weakest out of the main minions that we see. We see him get knocked around quite a bit, including getting smacked by Chow and knocked through several trees to getting nearly sucked out an airplane toilet. He also doesn't have a ton of stamina when compared to the other two in the main minion trio, often being the one who's the most out of breath when it's time to run. We even saw in the first movie that he was the first to fall to delusions when he was hungry, but he does have a couple points in his favor that at least put him above Marlena and Nefario. Like the rest of the minion species, Stuart is pretty much invulnerable to most types of damage, which is still pretty impressive. After all, if you can't win a fight, you can still count being able to walk away from a fight as a victory of sorts. We also see that once Stuart is able to find his inner beast, he's strong enough to take out a giant snake, even while being a literal chicken himself. While certainly not the most impressive minion around, Stuart still has his moments of being powerful. Reaching the original star of Despicable Me himself, we have the 12 year old Gru. Naturally, the first strength of sorts that comes to mind when thinking of Gru is his skill as an inventor. Even as a kid, he had plenty of tools and weapons to work with, such as homemade stink bombs, a cheese ray, and a bike with a built-in rocket. What do you drive? I got a legit bike. Due to his size, Gru's able to be pretty quick as well as fairly agile, allowing him to get the upper hand in some instances when he's able to dodge and outspeed his opponents. He even has his moments of physical strength, namely when he helped save Wild Knuckles from his pet crocodiles. In terms of durability, he was able to last being tortured, i.e. spun around on a giant record, for several hours and only needed a bit of recovery time afterwards. During the film's climax, we see him withstand more torture after Bell Bottom ties him to the hands of a clock. Though he isn't able to free himself, he's essentially able to walk off, nearly getting torn in half, jumping into the fray as soon as Otto unties him. Really, when compared to the other characters, Gru could probably rise above most. 
In the end, though, he's just a kid in this movie, and a short kid at that, leading to him being at the mercy of most adults in the film, being unable to overpower them once they get their hands on him. But while he may need some help with his escapes in terms of fighting and being a force to be reckoned with on his own, Gru isn't half bad. Next up is the newest Minions character, the easily distracted and braces-wearing Otto. Now, admittedly, Otto doesn't look like much on the surface. He's a little on the chubby side, and he's easily distracted, which often causes him to make mistakes. However, what Otto lacks in strength and brains, he manages to make up for in determination and, surprisingly enough, speed. We see him travel through places like Death Valley on a tricycle, and not only is he able to last for hours before finally passing out, but he manages to keep up with the guy on a motorcycle. We're sure we don't have to explain how much faster a motorcycle is than a tricycle, and yet, Otto is able to keep up with it on pedal power alone. Very impressive! <laughs> Even if we never see Otto fight anyone like the main trio of minions does, we still felt he deserved just a bit of spotlight for his own personal accomplishments. In a surprising turn of events, our second to most powerful minion ends up being the tiny and cute Bob. And no, we're not giving him a decent spot just because he was King of England for like five minutes in the last movie. Although somewhat of a pacifist, Bob is shown to be a decent fighter when pushed to do so, even if he would rather just give out hugs and teddy bears. What truly earns him a place above both Stuart and Otto, however, is is his insane durability. During Master Chow's training, we learn that Bob has the hardest head out of all the minions we see. Not only can it withstand wood, but several other heavy objects as well, including a giant metal safe. Without Bob getting hurt nor feeling any pain. He ends up using this to his advantage when he gets transformed into a goat during the film's climax, ramming his head and horns right into the gut of Jean-Claude. Guess this little guy's not just a cute face after all. Just above him is the leader of the main minion trio, Kevin. While we touched on it previously, it should really be restated here. Kevin is essentially the de facto leader of the minions whenever their boss is away or unavailable. He's responsible, determined, and one of the tallest minions that we see. Granted, that may not be a huge accomplishment, but hey, you take small victories where you can get them. Though it takes him a while to be taught any real skills by Master Chow, we do see in the film's climax that Kevin is the first to find his inner beast and defeat the vicious six member that's cornering him, all while being a cute little bunny. With these feats, he manages to get a decent ranking on our list. Moving on to our vicious six characters, we have Zvengeance next. This guy's main gimmick is being a roller skater. As such, he's pretty speedy and acrobatic, even being able to skate on walls. He's also got some muscles of his own, which can be helpful in a fight. But while he's a lot bigger and buffer than the other characters that we've mentioned so far, he doesn't really get a ton of moments to shine. He also doesn't have as many gadgets nor abilities as his fellow Vicious Six members, so we had to consider him to be the weakest of the group, even if he's still one of the stronger characters. Following him is the not quite so holy Nunchuck. As her namesake may imply, her main weapon is a pair of nunchucks that she can use to knock people out, both at short range and at a distance when she throws them. She's also shown to have the ability to float and levitate. Somehow, yeah, it's, it's never really explained. Adding to all this is her great durability, being able to take getting hit by a van thrown by Stronghold and only needing a minute or so to recover. Considering her age, that's pretty impressive. Maybe there is some divine intervention in play here. Getting into our top five, next is Jean-Claude. Again, we only need to look at his name to get a good idea of what his gimmick is. That, of course, being a giant lobster claw. With this claw, he's able to smash through walls and break through concrete roads and pretty much anything else in his way, giving him a massive strength boost. If the claw was ever not enough for him, we also see later on in the film that whenever he needs to do some real damage, he has a giant robot crab that he can drive and use to wreck entire buildings. Really, the only thing that's holding Jean-Claude back is that he isn't too buff outside of his extraordinary limb, which means he'd probably struggle a bit if someone were to disable his claw or somehow take it away from him. Just outside of our podium of power, we have Stronghold. Voiced by one of the toughest guys in the business, Danny Trejo, Stronghold's gimmick is his big metal hands. With just one powerful punch, he can destroy anything he needs to. From brick walls and stone to metal and thick glass, we even see him stop a van in its tracks before hurling it several feet. If that isn't strong and powerful, we, we just don't know what is. Stronghold only becomes even stronger once he gets his Zodiac Stone transformation, becoming a mighty bull. Although he's eventually still defeated by the minions in the end, they're pretty 
much the only guys who were able to stop him, and even then it was a close call. But like we said before, raw strength isn't everything. Earning the bronze medal of power is the groovy villainess Bell Bottom. Though she may be one of the goofier villains in this series thanks to her disco theming, Bell is not one to be messed with. Having a dancer's physique, she's light on her feet and incredibly skilled at evading attacks, both from Gru and the Anti-Villain League, and from her teammates' accidental friendly fire. Speaking of which, other than maybe Wild Knuckles, she's shown to be the most skilled and strategic of the group, given all the plans that she manages to come up with throughout the film. It's really no wonder that she ends up being the group's new leader. We also can't forget her eventual transformation into a fire-breathing dragon, easily the most powerful transformation that we see from the Zodiac Stone. However, because this is only a temporary transformation and not a permanent one, we couldn't give it too many points. Still, even without her scales and fire, Belle often manages to put up a good fight, using her gold chain as a lasso of sorts in order to bring her opponents down, although it isn't infallible as we see it break during the Vicious Six's high-speed chase after Gru. Being brains, beauty, and having just a bit of brawn, Belle nearly manages to be the entire package. However, we still have two more characters to rank above her. But now it's time to step away from the Vicious Six for a moment, for our silver metal of power, we're giving it to Master Chow. Chow is pretty much the definition of don't judge a book by its cover, when it comes to judging a person's power. Although short and middle-aged, Chow hasn't lost a step as a fighter and can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anyone willing to stand in her way. She defeats Wild Knuckles' guards without breaking a sweat, showing off great strength, skill, and accuracy. When looking at her moves, some of them border on being supernatural. She's able to gather up her own energy in the form of wind blasts to knock enemies away, and whenever Chow is in beast mode, she has the strength to knock a person through not one, but several trees. Making her all the more impressive is that she hardly ever uses any sort of weapon, only her own fists and feet. This is ultimately why we had to rank her above most of the Vicious Six. While those guys relied on powers and weapons, we believe that Chow could defeat anyone she had to with just her own skills. Even so, there's still one person that we feel tops Chow in terms of power. Finally, the gold medal of power is going to the former leader of the Vicious Six, Wild Knuckles. From the very start of the film, we see that Wild Knuckles is not one to be messed with. Although very old, he's far from out of the game. While in the Temple of the Zodiac Stone, we see him fight his way past at least a dozen or two enchanted guards that likely would have given anyone else a lot more trouble. We later see him fight his own hired guards, taking them out in only a few moves without breaking much of a sweat. Much like Chow, Wild Knuckles doesn't depend on any weapons to win a fight, unlike his fellow villains. This ultimately makes him come off as all the stronger and all the more skilled as well as all the more impressive considering that Knuckles is shown to be much, much older than Chow. But what really puts him over the top is his insane durability. The minions may be able to walk off normally lethal damage with ease, but this guy just takes it to a whole new level. He survives a hundred foot drop into water, being electrocuted, and being roasted by dragon fire. All of that, and he still manages to not only stay alive, but stay in decent health by the end of the film. For all these reasons, we felt that Wild Knuckles easily earned the title of most powerful Minions 2 character. But let us know in the comments section if you agree with our ranking and tell us what we should cover next. Remember to hit that notification bell and binge our Week to Powerful playlist, where we break down who the most powerful characters are in your favorite cartoons, shows, and movies. But most importantly, stay wicked.